We'll just uh, call the meeting to order. We're at, um, we are at, we have one more presentation left and it's um, Glenn Norton. Glenn's up there. This, okay. I looked up, I was having deja vu there for a moment. I'm thinking, <laughs> didn't we finish that item already? Kind of felt but, like that to me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome Glenn. And the uh, floor is yours and you're going to be discussing the Hamilton Downtown Multi-Residential Property Investment Program. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor and uh, Council. So this is a joint presentation actually between Urban Renewal and our colleagues in finance. And uh, as I understand, finance are saving their voices for the operating budget meeting later. So Urban Renewal will actually make the presentation. And uh, it, is a, it is a complicated one. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, it is a, a complicated one. There's a lot of numbers. Uh, we apologize for that, but it is, is necessary to give you the full background that you see the numbers there. We have, as you can see, here's what we're here to do. And, uh, and by the way, although the numbers uh, look big, uh, remember this is a good news story. I know my predecessor, Ron Marini, whenever he was in front of you, and I know last year when I was in front of you, my annual report said, if we ever come back to you to ask to increase this loan portfolio, it's a good news story. Please remember that. So sure enough, here we are. We're back. The development of multi-res downtown is taking off. It's, it's what you want to happen. It's what needs to happen uh, in terms of getting to our density targets, uh, reducing our taxes. So it's important that this happen. So again, you'll see that we're asking that we increase the uh, commitments onto this, the ability to lend our pool of funds to go from $20 million to $35 million at its maximum. And the interest costs for this, which are charged to my department, will be coming back in front of you in the operating budget review, which is coming up very shortly. Uh, so once again, the people that are going to be doing the presentation are the ones who wrote the report, put a lot of effort into it, and you've just heard from Hazel, so you know who she is. You may not know Judy Lamb quite as well. Judy is the Senior Business Development Consultant. We hired her away from Infrastructure Ontario back in May, and uh, I believe this is her first appearance in front of Council for a presentation. So we'll start with Hazel. Thank you. Hazel, welcome back. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a brief history of the, the uh, program, the multi-residential program. Then Judy is actually going to go over all the figures that you have before you in the report. So the uh, multi-residential program was developed to stimulate residential de development within the downtown. Um, and uh, the downtown, as you know, is the preeminent center as identified in the urban official plan. The program um, is offered within the downtown Hamilton community improvement project area. Oops. So these are the boundaries of the downtown Hamilton Community Improvement Project area. I know that you dealt with a report earlier that uh, expands slightly uh, these boundaries. So basically it's the CN tracks to the north, it's Hunter Street to the south, uh, Queen Street to the east, as well as uh, Victoria Street, to, no sorry, Queen Street to the west and uh, Victoria Street to the east. It does incorporate both the uh, corridors of Main and King Street to Dundurn Castle westerly and to Wentworth um, Avenue easterly. And uh, southerly it does uh, incorporate James Street to Charlton Avenue, then down Ferguson Avenue. So the p terms of the program, it offers um, interest-free loan up to 25% of the cost to construct um, budget, mainly for, well, predominantly residential development. So some examples would be uh, 26280 King Street East, which is the Spalacci, um, Homer's Suites, as you know, on Main Street, and uh, 68 George Street, which is on um, Main Street as well. The loans are advanced at three stages, so it's 60%, 80%, and 100%. Uh, they're repaid over uh, five, a maximum of five years and six months. When a loan is $5 million or more, or, with, or if the development is, uh, of a, um, is a property that's of historical significance, then City Council has the discretion to um, extend the five-year term, five-year, six-month uh, repayment term, to up to 15 years, but uh, charge an interest after the first five years. The repayment term is, commences one year after our final advance, ex exclusive of any holdbacks, and then they pay 10% of the principal for the next four years, and then a the balloon payment at the end of that fourth year, which is really the fifth year because they haven't paid for a year. If it's a condo, then they actually pay 25% of the sales price upon each closing of a unit until our loan's repaid. Presently, we don't have any maximums for the loans apart from the 25%. We don't have a maximum for all suites hotels that are eligible for the program. And we also don't have a maximum for per developer. 
Maximum loan commitments at the moment, as City Council approved a number of years ago, is uh, 26, no more than $26 million, million dollars at one time can be committed, and no more than $20 million dollars can be advanced at one time. As of September of 2012, we had uh, approximately $7.4 million dollars that had been advanced, and approximately uh, $9.8 million dollars that had been approved but hadn't been advanced to date, which uh, brings that up to 17 point, nearly $17.2 million, dollars, um, which means we only got $2.7 million dollars left to commit or to actually advance. And we have two applications for evaluation at the moment. Uh, we don't have sufficient information from the applicants to actually evaluate. We've had one meeting with our evaluation committee, uh, but we need additional financial information from them to make any further decisions. Okay, so uh, today we're before you recommending that we go from the maximum loan commitment from $26 million up to $45 million. And as I said, uh, Judy's going to give you the backup information with respect to the projects that we have uh, that we're aware of, that where the, well, the developer is proposing to apply for the program, and she'll go over those figures with you as well. We're also proposing that uh, the limit for the loans that can be advanced at one time going from $20 million to $35 million. That would mean that uh, the new limit of $35 million, we can actually advance $17.7 million versus the $2.7 million that we have right now in our account. We'd also recommend that uh, we do, um, well, in an effort actually to uh, protect the city's risk, but at the same time allowing uh, a number of projects to take advantage of this program that we do set limits and those limits would be 80 million dollars for uh, at one time for all suite hotels so right now you know we've got uh, money out for 40 bay street which is homewood suites as well as uh, 68 george which is the saybridge hotel and they amount to about 13.5 million dollars we're also um, recommending that uh, the maximum um, development or developer maximum be five million dollars for one developer Oh, sorry, no, for one application, excuse me. And uh, the maximum advance to one developer will be $18 million. So I'll hand the floor over to Judy, and she can go over those figures with you. Welcome. The, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Um, what you see is a list of applications. Uh, they haven't, we, as Hazel said, two have talked to us. Uh, because of uh, the request for privacy and confidential, I've just identified them as A through F and given you some um, preliminary information as to potentially what is the loan amount, the cost of the project, how many units they're building, and all the projects will be completed within the next two years. I can tell you that um, of these six projects, one of them is the Royal Connaught, options for homes and the development of the federal building. The, um, the type of projects that I can tell you that all of them are condos except for one all suites hotel and that's the information that we have at this point. There's probably other projects that um, are initially talking but they haven't provided enough information because it takes a while for these projects to have reached the point that they are right now to at least tell us all the details. This chart shows a summary. Uh, what I've done is the blue is the existing loans that we'll be repaying over the next uh, five years. I've included the new potential applications um, and they're in red and you can see that the peak will be in 2013 with the existing limits it wouldn't be sufficient because and this is as of December so you can see in 2013 even after some repayment uh, from the existing we're still at just under 40 million dollars and then you can see that also the red which is the new applications drop dramatically faster than our existing loans and that's because they're condos and they have to repay as they're sold so because of that, actually the interest cost because of the new applications are less than if they were all hotels and, and existing loans. But in fact, this is what 
based on the applications that we have at this point, what we do expect that as these pay off that there will be new applications. So in effect, the actual balance probably will stay more level. Now, taxation helped me uh, do some estimates. What we did was we did a pre-development assessment and post estimate. So right now on those six properties, the assessment is just under $6.7 million. Once it's been developed, we expect that the total will be 136.7, so an increase of $130 million to the city in increased assessment. The tax revenue based on the increase assessment on those six projects, what we did was we had to take into account you know, square footage of the building, construction costs, number of parking spaces, number of units created, and we've counted the municipal portion only of the increase, but we go from a pre-development tax revenue over that period of 161000 to roughly $1.7 million, an increase of just under $1.6 million per year. So just to summarize some of the benefits of increasing the line to this program is that it stimulates the new residential development in our downtown that couldn't proceed without the city's interest-free loan. The new projects, as I said, would increase the assessments from $6.7 million to $136.7 million. And the new projects would increase the tax revenue from $161,000 to $1.7 million, an increase of $1.6 million. Also, we have more than, what, 650 new residential units built in the downtown, and there's all the spin-off effects of having all those people living downtown, spending money, going to the restaurants, shopping, and so there's all the spin-off effects of that, plus the new construction of over 142 million in the downtown, creating employment and construction employment as well during the construction period. It helps us achieve the density target of 250 people and jobs per hectare within the downtown urban growth center. And we can see that the cost to the city is greatly exceeded by all the benefits of the increased tax revenue. So if I just go through the numbers, costs, and the benefits. The cost to the city is the incremental cost to the line of credit. So in 2013, and I ran numbers at 2.5%, which is the current interest rate that we use. But just in case rates go at 3, we also ran at 3.5. It would be 243350 using the 2.5 current interest rate, or 292000 if I use a 3% cost of funds. The incremental increase just on these projects over the period of the loan until it's fully repaid is about 800000 using the 2.5% or 967000 using 3%. The benefits, as uh, summarized, is the assessment will go up $130 million and the interest, uh, the revenue, tax revenue, will go up about $1.6 million per year. So I won't go over the summary of that's exactly what's in your report, but this is um, the recommendations that we're asking for today for council to approve. And if there's any questions. Thank you. We do have uh, questioners in Councillor Collins, Whitehead, Johnson, and Far so far. And Councillor Collins, the floor is yours. Mine is on the uh, last slide there, if you can turn it back to the cost. And, um, and you've provided a chart which is very beneficial. It talks about the timelines associated with each of the projects that are on the horizon. Yes. So you have the ability, it doesn't look like there's, there's enough funds with the current allotment to approve any of the applications because they're fairly large ones, the ones that are on the horizon. So if the budget process extends out to, as it usually does, March or April, are we delaying some of these um, some of those that are, you know, they're anticipating, it looks like a January 13 
approval, a February approval. There's five, looks like five of those projects anticipate receiving some kind of approval by March, and our budget process may not be wrapped up by that point in time. If, if I may, uh, through you, Deputy uh, Mayor, to the Councillor. Um, that is correct. What we don't know yet is exactly when those applications will be finalized. This is the problem. They're, they're all aware, all six of those applications are aware that the way the program is currently uh, structured, there is not funding for them. They know that. So they, fortunately for them, they don't have their work completed. They don't know their final costs. So we're kind of working in tandem. We're keeping them informed. They're quite aware that, aware that we're here today um, uh, with this uh, presentation. We're certainly hoping, and they're certainly hoping, that your endorsement of the changes to the program today anticipates that when we get to the project, the um, operating budget implications, that you're essentially saying, yes, we're behind that too. It probably wouldn't make sense for you to say today we support this, but then when we get to the operating budget, say, no, we don't. I, I, I'd like you to, to think that you know, through to the conclusion and consider them to be uh, pretty much um, joined together. My question would be, Glenn, based on what you've just stated, is, you know, is there an opportunity for us to accelerate one or more of those developments? Um, if you have two in the bank right now, an additional three would give you enough to do one, yeah. Is there someone who's waiting to put their application and can't because we have insufficient funds? If you don't mind, just a minute. We don't, as I said, we don't have anybody through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that is uh, that is ready now. Uh, the closest would be a project that you can see as you look out here uh, to your left. And probably if he knew that the money was going to be accelerated, he would accelerate his process. He's trying to go in lockstep because he's not prepared to spend a whole lot of money in doing his prep work if, in fact, the money's not going to be there. For all of these developers, they've all made it pretty clear to us that it is essential that they get these loans to go ahead, that the economics of doing them without the loans says that I'll stop. We don't want them to stop. So, you, you know, your point is well taken, Councillor. Okay. My other question would be, uh, do any of them, um, are any of them conditional on a, on a casino? Are they all separate from the casino process? Uh, these have, abs through you, Deputy Mayor, to the councillor, uh, all of these have nothing to do with the casino. Great to hear. Well, I just want to, uh, those are the questions I have, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to commend again, Glenn, I mean, I, I can't speak highly enough of your area, your division, and all the hard work that you've done. And um, I, I completely support what we have in front of us. We have a strong track record of people paying us back as it relates to the past projects that we've supported. And because of that, and because I think of the strong positive buzz that we've seen in terms of the infill development and I, th I think the downtown is supposed to support 40 percent of our anticipated yes. uh, residential growth in, in, the, in the future and so to know that we have 600 plus units on the horizon I think is, is nothing but positive news so I thank you again for coming forward today. Thank you Councilor Collins. We now have at the appropriate time. Uh, Councillor Whitehead. You had, uh, maybe it's captured here I'm trying to understand, uh, when you make these uh, assessment tax uh, um, variance observations, what, what, what the facility is paying in tax or assessed today, and after uh, the development, what it will be assessed at and taxed at uh, tomorrow, um, are we not, are we, we're not realizing that, though, right away, because there's a payment schedule, so over, what is it? Is it the three-year period that we're looking that we don't realize that benefit uh, right away? What, what is the time frame? The, the actual, yes, we won't get it right away because they have up to five years to repay the loan. And for condos, they'll be, so it, it depends on impact reviewing it. What I did was just based on um, the cost-benefit payback period, um, it works out to about three years if... Um, the taxes were due to us right away, but yes, it, it would have to be after the period of when the uh, reduced, you know, 80% in the first, 100% first year, 80% second, 63rd, and so on. So it would be after the five-year period. So in, in essence, there is a tax holiday for uh, uh, for those number of years uh, relative to their assessed values? If I may, Deputy Master, uh, Mayor, through you to the Councillor. So uh, Judy's three-year payback actually took into consideration that in the first year, 
there is no tax increase, right? So they apply, there's two programs at play. There is the loan, and then there's also the phased in taxes. So in the first year, as you heard, we give back 100% of the municipal portion. The entire education por portion gets collected and forwarded on to provincial government. In the second year, yes, we give back 80%. So now we're incrementally ahead. We've got the 20% increase. And in the following year, we're 40 and 60 and so on. So over the course of the five years, we're, we're after the fourth year, we're up to the full $1.6 million in incremental tax. Okay, appreciate the clarification. That's it. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. Now we have Councillor Johnson, then Farr, then Pearson, then McCaddy, then Duvall. And I do need to inform everyone that we only have this room till 4 p.m. and we have a lot of items to deal with. So, moving on, we have Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, and thank you very much, folks, for this presentation. It's, it's remarkable. I was at an event with four other mayors, and they called me mayor, so I would just include me in. And it's on the West Lincoln side. And all four of them were buzzing about all the activity that was happening in Hamilton. And I really wanted to make sure Neil heard this as well, because they were just in awe. And, they were, and if you haven't gotten some phone calls from those four different mayors, then you'll be expecting them soon. Um, just to go back to your, your uh, slide number 10, you talked about for confidentiality reasons, these were not published. Can we just make that clear to the folks at home that they will be made pub public when the application is approved, given what happened in the past about one of them jumping up and biting us in the rear end? Yes, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to the Councillor. The projects will come to you after we've done the due diligence. So they have to apply, and we have a multidisciplinary committee. We do all the evaluations, and then the report will come to Council for approval. Thank you. And, I, and through you, Deputy Mayor, I appreciate the fact that uh, the uh, applicants want to get all their ducks in a row before things are made public. So I appreciate that part. I just wanted to, to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Farr. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and I'm glad it was uh, re-emphasized by Glenn with the questioning from the Ward 5 Council with respect to what this brings uh, annually uh, in the long run, the $1.6 million, which is probably a little over of a third of what uh, Casino brings annually, which is terrific, and that's, uh, that's just nonstop, and that's uh, fantastic work from the Urban Renewal Department, and what was also emphasized was that in all cases, what's before us, um, and we've heard this in the media reports from uh, Brancourt particularly, who's undergoing now uh, five-phase, $140 million investment in the heart of our city, that that wouldn't even have started. Not one shovel in, in any area of that uh, property uh, would have hit the uh, dirt if uh, these uh, incentives weren't in place. And we're hearing the same now going forward with the six before us. So I had a question, but it was answered, and I just wanted to emphasize that again and, and commend the Urban Renewal, formerly Downtown Renewal Department, for their ongoing hard work and dedication. Thanks. Councillor Pearson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and, and thank you everyone here. I certainly, certainly support this going forward. I think this has been a great initiative that Hamilton has uh, progressively followed through with and uh, will continue to do. My only question, if I could, is on slide nine. I just want to be sure that there's no confusion because I'm reading this. It says, first off, the maximum loan amount advanced is limited to $18 million. That's on all suite hotels one time. Then below it says $5 million will be amount per development. So there's a difference in the type of development there. Is that what we're saying? What we're saying is, yes, $18 million at one time for all the projects for all suite hotels. And then per application, it would be $5 million. So only $18 million for... All the all suite hotel that's, applications that come in. That's, that's correct. The max we're going the maximum to get. we're actually at one time. Okay. And then the maximum of 18 million at one time for a single developer. That's correct. So in other words, a develop one developer may have some all suite hotels, but also condos. But combined, they can't be any more than 18 million dollars. Great. Thank you, and I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pearson. Councillor McCaddy. Thanks, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and I. A great program, obviously. I've said that uh, many times over the years. Uh, but I, I just want to follow up on Councillor uh, Collins' comments, and uh, and I, I would like to uh, to make an amendment to to move this program ahead now instead of waiting for the 2013 uh, budget process. Because I my sense is that uh, from Glenn's comments that there are projects out there that could be advanced or could move a bit quicker than they are now. And it sends a strong, strong message from council to uh, 
to uh, support that. So uh, I think there's two uh, items. If I can just check in on the uh, item A, I think uh, there would be just a, a period after 35 million, and and then I guess a question to uh, to to either Glenn or to Rob Rossini. Item B would need to change because that refers to the uh, 2013 budget process. So the amount uh, money we're talking about, Mr. Deputy Mayor, is the $400,000. So if that was approved today, would I need to uh, add anything uh, or, or certainly modify, but uh, what language would I use in item B uh, that uh, $35 million uh, lent under the program at one time be approved? Uh, but then do I have to make reference to a, uh, a dollar source uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor? Rob, can you help us out there? Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So if Council wanted to do this today without bringing it to the uh, 2013 budget process, then the appropriate language would be in the, at the last line in A, and that the increase be approved within the 2013 operating budget. And then what that means is you've effectively increased the tax levy by $400,000 because this is a program in the operating budget funded through the levy. Okay, so noted. And uh, you'll move that accordingly then? Yes, yeah, so you can come back to me, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Okay, at the appropriate time I shall. Uh, moving on now to Councillor Duvall. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and to you to, uh, to Glenn. Glenn, thanks very much. Great program. Just a, a couple of uh, questions. Um, I understand, reading the report, that we have a, an outstanding balance of seven million four hundred sixty-seven thousand. So, uh, from the outstanding balance, how much was lent out? Uh, oh, and you know what? If you don't mind, uh, through you, Deputy uh, Mayor, to the Councillor, I'm going to have Hazel, who has been tracking these since inception. Hazel, okay. floor is yours. Just, just bear with me. I have to get the right piece of paper here. Excuse me. No problem. Take your time. <laughs> I've got something to loan him now too. Fourteen. Uh, you can take your time. We can't. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I won't be long. Here we go. Okay, so I can, I can tell you that um, of the of the programs that we've already approved, there was 874 units constructed. Um, that was a construction value of $104 million. Loan advance in total was $70,262,000. Loans paid back $9.794 million. So, so I, uh, I lost you there. I'm, oh, these, I'm sorry, can you repeat that again, Hazel? So this, is it, this isn't the proposed, this is the existing. That's yeah, what you're exactly. asking. Well, so, exactly. so how much have we so far lent out? $17,262,420. Okay, and, and we've got seven million, seven and a half million outstanding. That's yes. Great. Okay, that's great. Um, now through you, Mr. and Hazel, is, is anybody defaulted? Do we have anybody that we've ran into trouble with? Are that's, there many of them? That's correct, we had one, and that was uh, A.T. King William, and that was for $1.1 $1 .1 million. Okay, and that was, uh, I believe, a couple years ago? That was about three years ago. Okay, all right, thank you, thank you very much. So just to clarify, we've had one default. One default, and since then we've actually uh, tightened up the evaluation process. Okay. Yeah. Um, moving on now, we have Councillor Partridge. Yes, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and um, I too think this is a, a great program, but I just want to, to clarify, um, I would not be in support of this not going to the 2013 budgeting process, and I just want to clarify because I thought I heard you say that if all the applications are not complete, they will be coming forward, but you're not anticipating they're going to be complete uh, until February, March. And we're going to be dealing with the budget process, January, February, March, hopefully approving it by April. So can you just clarify that, please, Glenn? If Glenn? I may, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through you to the Councillor. So what I was referring to was because we have set the expectation for those developers that the funds wouldn't be approved for the operating budget, they are lagging filling in their applications because of the work that's involved, getting down to the fine costs. Councillor Collins' point is if we said now the money is there, would they then start working faster? Yes, I believe so, and there's probably one at least who could get it done fairly quickly. But, you know, again, it, it, I, I can see your point. It's... Yeah, no, and I appreciate that answer because it is. It's a great program, and, you know, but I just, I just feel that it, it needs to be part of the 2013 budget process. We've got a lot of uh, challenges and things to deliberate. So um, those are my comments. Okay, thank you, Councillor Partridge. 
Um, I'm going to put myself on, on the speaker's list. Just on that particular point, because I think we have to separate... Oh, sorry, can I give the chair over to Councillor Partridge, actually? Yeah. Um, to you, Madam Chair. With respect to the program itself, I think we have to separate and distinct... Uh, and make it a distinct program in that there's a return for an investment in your program that doesn't exist elsewhere. Could you just elaborate and emphasize that key point and how we can differentiate this particular program from that of other programs within the city where there is no return? Yes, uh, through the uh, Madam Chairman uh, to the uh, Councillor. So you've heard one of the, the paybacks already, right? We mentioned that for this additional $15 million in loans, we will generate $1.6 million in additional annual taxes once we get past the, the phase-in project, right? The phase-in period. Um, this, the other benefits after that start to get more harder to quantify because now we're talking about what, what's the effect of having 650 additional living units in the downtown. Uh, you know, they're shopping, they're buying food, they're going to cultural events, they're spending money downtown. That is something that we have not quantified before. It certainly is there. The other payback is in the construction uh, loans, or the construction uh, costs, I should say. So the people that will be employed during that, the materials that will be supplied, that will be purchased locally, the equipment will be rented, that is all all accelerated uh, to the tune of $143 million. Thank you, Madam Chair. Really, by, by delaying it or deferring it to the budgetary period, period, we're actually deferring or delaying the benefits as well. Is that correct? So, which, in essence, then is distinct in itself and one that I think we can't afford to delay. So at the appropriate time, I will support the motion that Councilman Caddy is bringing forward, um, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Okay. I'll take the you chair back. have the chair back. Yep. Thank you, uh, uh, Councilor Partridge. So moving forward now, Councillor, we have oh, Councillor Whitehead. Uh, two things. One is uh, I just wanted to add because uh, we had uh, a number of calls in the past in regards to the program and, and the scrutiny. I know you've tightened things up, uh, so I just want to make uh, have a clear understanding. When somebody has a criminal record or had, has been charged in fraud in the past and those kinds of things, uh, that is screened through this process. Then, uh, through you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, no, that has not been changed as a process. You referred that back to corporate services for a review of that a requirement. There is no current requirement that somebody applying cannot have a uh, criminal record. What we're looking for when we do our due diligence is the history of repayment. If there was a history of probably a fraud or embezzlement, as any good banker would, we would say, hmm, sorry, not going to do it. But when you get to the broad characteristic of a criminal record that can be anything from stealing a stop sign to to other more serious crimes uh, counselor and that is still in the hands of corporate services for a report back and I really appreciate that I was just looking for a clarification because I, I also agree that uh, there could be you know, where do you stop in regards to the criminal uh, side I think what's really important in these programs is as a track record of paying back fraud and embezzlement are, are clearly uh, the, the red flag for me uh, but these other things are uh, incidental relative to uh, making sure we secure the dollars and get the benefits. So I, wa I wanted to get that clarified because it has been an issue in the past. The other thing uh, that was mentioned, I guess uh, the only caution I want to throw to m my colleagues is it's easy to grab low-hanging fruit pre-budget uh, process and start uh, moving things forward regardless of their good programs. And I'm, not, and I'm really very, very supportive of this. But not, not having a full context and start cherry-picking now is like opening the floodgate to uh, a, 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 an ad hoc process versus a process that looks at everything in its entirety as we move through the, uh, the 2013 budget process. So I, I, I would prefer, quite frankly, to uh, make these decisions in the context of all the other uh, pressures and programs uh, as opposed to start, start today cherry-picking uh, low-hanging fruit and finding ourselves in a situation that there's no flexibility and we have a huge potential impact on our taxpayers in this community. So I would only caution that let's work on the comprehensive uh, side. That's all how we've been doing it in the last couple of years, and we've been very successful. Okay. Um, could we just uh, bring forward the motion uh, first? Uh, Councillor McCaddy, I'm going to accept that motion right now. Mr. Deputy Mayor, thank you. It's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Farr, that subsections A and B be amended by deleting the words, in quotes, referred to the 2013 budget process for Council's consideration and replaced with the words, quote, be approved within the 2013 budget process uh, in lieu thereof. And I'll need to have Rob clarify that. Uh, and, and furthermore, where it ref and this, uh, I'll speak to this in a moment, 
Uh, furthermore, where it refers to, quote, an amount of $400,000, that be replaced by, quote, an amount of $400,000 or less. And if I can speak to that uh, briefly, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, hearing Councillor Partridge's comments and similar comments uh, around the, the table uh, and, and uh, Glenn's comments about the projects and the timing, there may indeed be uh, uh, perhaps only one or two projects that go ahead uh, in the short term in the next uh, couple of months uh, uh, that would occur before our March-April approval of the, the budget. So I, I've modified the, uh, the $400,000 figure to, uh, to allow us to, uh, to spend less than that uh, if, uh, if, if, in fact, uh, that's what the opportunity is uh, in the next couple of months. So that would, I would offer that up as a bit of a compromise um, to those who are concerned about that. And generally, of course, the reason I'm, I'm wanting to move this is uh, the, the payback that we get on this investment for the city is, is unparalleled across the corporation. We saw that today. We've seen that uh, in previous years with Ron Marini's presentations. So nothing's changed. It's only getting better. So I think we need to capitalize that. We need the assessment because uh, we know there's a huge delay in assessment before we actually see it. And then, of course, a huge delay in property taxes coming into to our uh, our coffers. Uh, so we want to move that as, as quickly as we possibly can. It's, it's a win-win, uh, well-proven uh, relationship. So I can just ask for you to to Rob Rossini to make sure he's okay with uh, with what uh, the replacement of the the words were. So it's uh, the quote was be approved within the 2013 budget process. I wasn't sure if he. If he needed to, uh, I think he might have said something different earlier on, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I think he sourced where the money is coming from. But Rob, can you expand upon that? Uh, through you, um, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, I, I think a better wording, wording would be approved within the 2013 operating budget. Period. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought I heard earlier on. So, okay. uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that's my motion. Okay, fair enough. And that's seconded by Councillor Farr. Now, um, before we do that, we should probably. Well, let, let, let's vote on that. So moved by McCaddy, second by Fire. All in favor? Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, hold on. So we have Councillor Partridge, Johnson. What? Oh, she's, she's second time. She's second time. Yeah. So go ahead, go ahead. Now, apparently, I don't have a lot of time. So, <laughs> so who has the floor? Thank you so much, Tom. So can I just get a clarification on this then? Are we, because what I heard was 2013 operating budget, that it be approved in that. So we are then sending it to the budget approval process. Is that what I'm hearing? No, we're actually approving it within that operating budget. So. Oh, so we're saying well, that we're, we're going to approve it. That's correct. So Rob, can you expand upon that, please, sir? Through you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor. So right now, it's a, a referral to the budget process, which means when we go into GIC, you would debate this pressure or enhancement with all the other funding pressures before Council. If Council wishes to actually approve it today, then the words would be, be approved within the 2013 budget. So now you would uh, already have pre-approved this item in the budget for 2013 for next year. So that's the difference between using the words be referred versus be approved. If you use the words be approved, it's done with. You wouldn't have to debate it again. It would be in the budget for 2013. Okay, and thank you for clarifying that. So when we say be approved, what we're talking about is in the 2013 operating budget would be the full amount that they're requesting. So we're saying it's already going to be approved. We're not going to debate it. That's correct. For you, Madam, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that's correct. So you would be approving an increase in the operating budget of $400,000. Okay, thank you, Rob, now, for that correction. on that correction. point, Councillor McCaddy, do you, do you want to expand upon that? Clarification? Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I just wanted to clarify the additional uh, amendment I made here was uh, that it be to amount of $400,000 uh, or up to, up to uh, an amount of $400,000, and that was to acknowledge the fact that some of these projects that we're hearing about may not move ahead in 2013, may not move ahead early in 2013. Uh, so, uh, for example, if there's uh, one of those projects that moves ahead in, uh, in December, January, uh, the, or January, I guess, because we're talking 2013, mm -hmm. as compared to March, April, 
and, and maybe it was $100,000, uh, that that amount would be used at that point in time. Okay. Uh, so it's up to uh, Mr. Rosini wants to add something to this. Uh, Ms. Rosini? Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So uh, how this is actually structured, if you look at Recommendation C, Recommendation C says that if there's any unused portion of the budget for the uh, residential loan program, we put that money into the reserve account for that process, for, for this program. So uh, my recommendation would be, since you need certainty on the levy, because it's tax levy funded, you approve the 400000 If any money gets used, or uh, sorry, if any money gets unused, it would go into that reserve, and then for 2014 can be used as a source of financing when the other projects come on stream. So, the uh, Glenn and his team continually monitor how much is actually needed and with with the addition of C that may actually help mitigate future budget increases and if you look in the paragraph where well, we talked about what the what, what the total cost or budget impacts may be in the future when all the units come on stream you may actually be able to lower that because if you put money in the reserve there's a fairly quick turnover on these units some come in, some get repaid. So my recommendation would be, if council wanted to approve it, approve the full four hundred thousand, and just and with with the understanding that with, when you approve C, any unspent funds stay in the program, go in the reserve, and can be used as a future source of funding. Okay, so just to clarify, yeah. Councilor Partridge, your question has been answered. Are you satisfied with that? Uh, but no, but you, you're satisfied with the answer. You just don't like the answer. Okay, that's a little different. All right, uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, and it's more of a comment than a question uh, about the amendment. I and I and I, I feel like I'm talking uh, like my colleague to my left, who always says it's so nice to have everything on the wall with all the stickies and everything going. So then you prioritize what you want to take in, what co what you want to pull out. So that's where I'm headed for this. I think this is a wonderful program too, but there's a lot of other wonderful programs that are going to be up on that wall that we all want to champion at one time or another. Um, as Glenn said earlier, the people that have applied already understand that this is on the condition and, and they may not or they may get it. So I think that everybody around us, behind us, understands that this is, this is a program that has to come to council for approval through the budgeting process. And I really want to respect that process. I like the way the process has been. The staff have knocked themselves out the last two years I've been here to make sure we understand the process, what needs to stay in, what doesn't need to stay in, how we prioritize our stuff. That's where I want to go, and that's where I'd like this to be, is up on the wall with that sticky, with everything else, so that we can take a look. Instead of running on a motion right now, I love this program, I really do. And I'm hoping we can work out a way that this actually goes through, but I also respect the process more. So I'm, I can't support this at this time, maybe at budgeting time, when it's all out on the wall, I'll pull that sticker off and say this is the one I want to keep. So I can't support it at this time, thank you. Okay, um, we have councillors. Um, Pearson and Whitehead. Councillor Pearson. Mr. Deputy Mayor, thank you. And, and again, I think we all support this program here, but I have concerns because we start picking and choosing. That wasn't the recommendation from staff. And we're going to be back where we were a few years ago where the whole bunch of things were coming kind of ahead of the budget deliberations. And it was just being under the radar of approving it. And then we had more of a budget crunch come deliberations for that year because we've already approved things. So I, I don't disagree with the program, but my question to through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to Rob then is, what is the amount currently in the downtown Hamilton Reserve account? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, there is 320,000? 319 in the reserve right now. So the additional 400,000 that's being recommended to be put in there is for the full amount of the loans, not just so, I mean, it's incre incremental by the time this is approved, that money should still be there, correct? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, sorry, Mr. Deputy Mayor, yes, that's correct. Thank you. If I may, thank you, Councillor Pearson. Are there any further speakers on this side? Hearing none. Oh, Councillor Whitehead. Could I just ask, um, staff didn't make the recommendation to move this now. You, you obviously felt comfortable with what you know is on the plate that, uh, that there's not going to be any significant loss in opportunity. Is that correct? 
Uh, uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, to the Councillor. Uh, we didn't make that recommendation because we did not think it would fly, uh, quite frankly. <laughs> so there's no sense putting something out there that we thought would get voted down, so we put it out how we thought it would fly. So, I mean, I do have a suggestion, though, if I, if I may. Um, so first of all, just uh, further to Mr. Rossini's point, point, on page, uh, what page is this? Third, fourth page of our report, we do talk about that 319,000 that's currently in reserve. We're already planning 170,000 of that is needed for next year. Like we're, we've been building that reserve for deliberate reasons, so just so you know. My only thought was, uh, and through, uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, to Mr. Rossini, is there a way to get by this, this the, the um, intention of what Councillor McCaddy is uh, proposing through the 2012? Is there any surplus elsewhere in the 2012 discretionary budget that you could commit now? Just a thought, uh, Mr. Rosini. <laughs> through you, Mr. Well, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Glenn, if you saw my last budget uh, <laughs> presentation, it was a 5.5% uh, projected tax increase, so it, it will be a difficult budget process. Hence, the uh, you know uh, there was a bit of me in that resolution and the proposed recommendations to refer it to the budget process. Um, so uh, there will be lots of choices, some very difficult choices for this council in 2013. I would add though that this is one program that's expected to make money, so that's a that's an important feature than some of the other programs. Uh, but it will be a difficult budget process, and it's up to Council then to decide whether to approve this today or to approve this in the first quarter of 2013. Okay. So can I, uh, the question I was asking uh, Glenn is, do you believe over the next three months that there's going to be opportunity lost if we don't make that decision today? Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, to the Councillor. We don't think any of the projects will stop and never be started again through that delay. That is not the message we're getting. Uh, I think Councillor Collins' point and others was, could they be moved ahead? Rather than waiting on hold for three months, if we had the money now, they would move ahead faster. That's all. I do not anticipate we will lose any of the projects currently contemplated by additional uh, three months. Okay, so we're talking moving fa three months sooner, but the projects would still go ahead, so there's no real risk. Can I, um, I guess my, my concern on, on the motion again is that we've got to have some credibility in this process and I think Councillor uh, Johnson summarized it very well. I love this program too, but then if I start cherry picking, you know, maybe I want to move user fees today because that generates revenue. And if it says it's about grabbing low hanging fruit that generates revenue, well there's another example of, uh, of an area that we can uh, choose today. I really want to do it in the context of the overall pressures and understanding where my priorities are, and this would probably be one. I don't know until I see the whole package. So it's very difficult for me to start a process where you start ad hoc choosing uh, uh, good programs prior to getting all the information and, all, uh, and what the net impacts on our levy may be. So I, I just can't, at this time, support moving uh, this out of the, the 13 uh, budget process. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. Uh, now we have Councillors Farr, McCaddy, and myself. Councillor Farr. Mr. Deputy Mayor, and thank you for your comments earlier. I really appreciate the motion. And, you know, it's not a huge rush, but uh, I, the wall analogy was a good one. And, and this would be, in my opinion, and, and I'm going to talk about the, the consultations and inquiries I've had as a Ward 2 Councillor and, and the expectations I would have if we were to move this amendment today. But this is that part of the wall where it's the ATM machine. Uh, you just heard our, our Director of Finance say that this is a, a proven money maker and we're talking about significant money. We're talking about if all six come through, as I expect they will, 1.6 million annualized. So I think that's an important uh, point and, and in my consultations, in my inquiries, and it's, it's happening often, you know, what's going on with the Connaught? Uh, when can we get moving on this and that? Uh, and it's always with respect to what the constituents have, are, are consistently bringing my way, and that's, we have, I mean, I'm telling you, it's near states of euphoria in every corner of Ward 2. I was just with three seniors yesterday on, in the Duran neighborhood, and they're very, very excited, and they actually tried to give me the credit 
uh, for all this crane action and momentum in downtown Hamilton. I said this is a decade's worth of work from previous councillors and mayors and so forth that's seeing this momentum. And the last thing I want to see is this momentum even take, if, if we can prevent a lull, as I believe we can prevent a lull with what we have before us, then I, I, I want to do everything I can to jump on it. And I want to say that I can confidently tell those who may have some concern that in my consultations and inquiries, we're good for in no time at all, well beyond this, well before this three month period, one, maybe two, and possibly even three of these developments that you see before you to, to move forward in a lot quicker fashion. They have made it very clear that this incentive is important to them, and, and I believe it, and, I, and I, I can confidently tell you at least two will get moving further, and I think in some ways that's what Glenn's trying to say too. So I think it's terrific. I'll have one question through you too, Glenn. What if, uh, I know we, we're looking at a $2 million capacity now, uh, one application that I, I feel confident would move forward fairly quickly needs $5 million. If we were to add $3 million to the capacity, how, and that brings it up, how would that change the $400,000 operating question that we have before us, the pressure? Yeah, uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, to the Councillor. That would probably work. We could work within the uh, reserve that we have. If you, if you only brought one forward, as you're aware, we, we currently could lend, an actual lend out of another $2.7 million. Our capacity is even higher than that. So theoretically, yes, one application could come forward now if it was finished and could uh, get $5 million approved. Correct? Yeah, we, we could do that. Um, that we do, we would use up um, interest that we currently have in the reserve and we've budgeted 170000 for that. So the incremental difference for that one project uh, over the course of those couple of months, because again, the first few months are not the, uh, the part that really costs us anything. They don't get their money, to be, to be clear. Nobody gets their money until they're 60% complete. So even if they started tomorrow, which they can't, they wouldn't be up to the 60% completion point. It's really about us not over committing um, you know, to our constituents and to our developers that we actually do have the money in the jar to pay them when they get there. It's not about them being able to draw it in, uh, in the next 30 or 60 days. So still, still with respect to maintaining this momentum that clearly everyone is throughout this city feeling pretty good about and throughout the province and I think we stand out throughout in, in, for, certain, uh, for certain in comparable cities throughout the nation uh, with respect to what's going on in Hamilton. We hear it almost weekly. We've got another thing happening here today and hand it out to us. So, so what if it were two projects? How many more millions there? <laughs> Based on what you could see, Glenn, with yeah. your knowledge and all your work going forward yeah, uh, that's, on, on an expedited uh, process. Yeah, through you, Deputy Mayor, to the Councillor, that's, that's getting out there. It's pretty hard to predict, uh, you know, uncertain future events. We, we haven't had that many conversations about the immediacy of their applications. There is one, as you said, who could go pretty much uh, right away. Uh, he's chomping at the bit now. Um, so I, I would hesitate to do that. All I can say is that in our re current reserve, if we had to, we could fund that additional one on the interest cost. As you'll see from that page four, where we talk about the 319,000. We're proposing to use that, spread that over two years, take out half of that reserve in 2013 and half of it in 2014. So the impact is not felt in, uh, in one year and in 2014 it jumps up. So if we had to, we could move that interest forward and use it in 2013. We would be looking for a greater increase in 2014 though, which we thought would not be you know, uh, as easy as, as smoothing the interest cost. So, on that point, uh, Councillor Farr, uh, Mr. McCabe, would you like to? So, uh, if I could uh, be so bold, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So, we're, we're going a bit off track here. I don't think there's any non support for raising the cap, you know, to the $35 million. So, the issue today I'm hearing is the timing for consideration of the additional interest cost. And this is an opportunity cost, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. You know, the additional 400,000 uh, interest, you know, for 2014 and beyond, I mean, we're talking about $1.6 million um, annually. So we're quadrupling what is an opportunity cost to the department for an additional, you know, $130 million in assessment. So, I mean, Glenn says we didn't recommend it because it's out of the budget process. So you didn't think there'd be a chance to do it to uh, have you approve it. I would say I don't think there's any chance you won't approve it as part of the 2013 budget. And we have a department that all our pressure is about this 
opportunity cost interest, you know, we're well below 2% now in terms of the first cut of our department's budget, which I was going to present today. So I don't want to, you know, steer away from that approval of the $35 million cap, which gives the, you know, the word out there that we're in for more business. We, we're in for considering these six new projects and these, you know, hundreds of new, new units and more assessment. So that's a picture I'd like to okay. paint. Mr. Thank Gibson you, Mr. Here. McGee. Councilor Farr, any, any further questions? Well, I appreciate Tim's comments, and I would echo them that there's no chance that we wouldn't approve it. And uh, like I say, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in it every day. And, uh, you know, there's another development that's probably a couple of parking spaces away, and it is huge. It is going to be another game changer in the core. And I'm feeling very confident. And uh, I think uh, we have an opportunity here with what's before us to uh, just maintain this you know, people are talking about us everywhere, and, and it's in a very positive light. And, you know, if we can prevent the lull, uh, and it, even if it's just three months, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Tim's right. There's no possibility that we wouldn't uh, move forward on this anyway. So why not, if we have that opportunity now, to, to, to do that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Farrer. Councillor McCaddy. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And really, uh, I, I'm... So I was a bit surprised as to the amount of discussion that's occurred here uh, over the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, the intention to, to move this ahead now is precisely that uh, I'd be flabbergasted if we didn't approve it in the 2013 budget process. This is, this is a straightforward business decision. Uh, this is, this is uh, making it clear that we're open for business, uh, making it clear that, uh, that it, uh, just like private corporations, the city of Hamilton is able to move quickly when an opportunity presents itself. And the kind of numbers we're seeing here are just incredible. Uh, so to, to, to make that commitment uh, quickly uh, demonstrates the City Council is every bit as agile as, as, a, as, a, as a board of directors for a private corporation. We're often accused, Mr. Deputy Mayor, of uh, being cumbersome and slow and, and not acting like a business, not acting like a private corporation. Many of the folks who have spoken today, have, 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 I've heard them say that. And they've said that to me and they've said that to others. So this is a straightforward business decision. If this was a, an expenditure that was risky or uh, you know, really subject to likely not being approved in the 2013 uh, budget process, I think it's a whole different discussion. But what we're doing is, uh, what we're saying here with, uh, what I'm saying with this amendment is, is to move it ahead because it's a true winner. It allows us to, uh, to make it clear uh, to all the uh, folks out there who would like to invest in downtown Hamilton that we're open. We're open for business. We're ready to move as soon as this is approved uh, by council uh, uh, tomorrow night or whenever it gets to council. Uh, so it's, it's just a straightforward business decision. And I'm, I'm just, just scratching my head uh, as to the, the feelings of caution I'm seeing around the, the, uh, the horseshoe. And, you know, I think we, we could be accused of, of missing an opportunity and, uh, you know, acting like a, a large bureaucratic organization, which is not where we want to be uh, at this point in time as we, as we begin to turn things around in downtown Hamilton and be successful. So, so I, I, I'm quite surprised and I'm hoping that... Uh, with the comments that Tim has made and, and uh, others, uh, we can move ahead with this today. Thank you, uh, Councilor McCaddy. Can I just give the chair over to Ms., uh, Mr. Mayor? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I think it's important that over and above what has been already stated, clearly we have a situation here that for every dollar, we're actually receiving a return for that dollar. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to Rob, could you roughly, for every dollar we've spent on this program, based on what we heard today, what is the return to the taxpayer? So, uh, through you, uh, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I, I did know the number of what we've made in additional property assessment tax dollars since the inception of the program versus what we've spent, and that's a significant return. I just don't have that number um, uh, could you in give front me of me. Rough, I don't know if, uh, uh, if uh, a rough figure. Well, uh, if Hazel has that. Hazel. Yes. Um, so we spent seventeen million two hundred sixty-two four hundred twenty, and so far that uh, is one point four six million dollars in increased annual taxes. Um, that doesn't include forty Homewood or sixty-eight George. When you factor those in, um, and some other projects, it's approximately two point four million dollars per per year. Okay. So for every dollar that we've spent, you, for every dollar that we've spent, how much has? Oh. has oh. 
So, sorry. Okay, so the interest cost that we've spent to date is 1.782,000. 100 and $1,782,000. Okay, so Mr. Oh, we've lent $17 million. So, uh, okay, so for every dollar spent, our return is what? $10? Okay. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, the number that we should be looking at mm -hmm. is what's the total increase in property taxes versus what is the interest expense that we've spent? Not the total amount of loans, because that principal amount comes oh, back to us. Yeah, we don't have right. it. We do only construction value. We have a rough figure. It would really help this debate. Well, the, the, rate, the ratio of interest paid to construction value is one point. For every dollar we loan, we trigger 50, uh, fifty-nine dollars in construction value. Okay. There's a return. So through you, Mr. Mayor. Construction value. That, that's a that's a fifty-nine percent return in our investment, and and we're sitting here now. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Can, can I have an answer on? What other department or whatever expenditure does this city have where our return is anywhere near 59%, if any, for that matter? Through you, Mr. Mayor. And Councillor Whitehead, I'm asking the finance manager a question. Through you, Mr. Mayor. To Ms. Rosini, is there any other department that for every dollar we spend, we're actually receiving money in return in an investment? And if so, is it anywhere near 59%? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I think this would be uh one of the higher returning, if not the highest returning, programs uh, that we have. Just to, to clarify this, uh, uh, do the staff know what's the total increase in property taxes we've had to date from the loan program? I believe it was one and a half, two million dollars. It was, it was more. on an annual basis. One point four million dollars. Point four million. So to put that number in perspective, the current budget for annual interest cost is three hundred thousand. So, 1.7 divided by 300,000, that's almost a five to six times the amount of the investment. So that's your rate of return that you should be looking at. And no, other, and no other investment that the city has even comes remotely close to that. So having said that, not to mention all of the other secondary benefits, what we have before us, if we, del if we delay this, we're actually delaying the benefits, where we can't say that about any other expenditure. So we're literally delaying the inevitable to delay the benefits, which suggests that some people might be delayed in, their, in this process. So um, I'd like to move forward as quickly as possible, and I thank you very much for your time, and I'll take the chair back, and, count and Councilor Partridge is on the list, and then Mayor Bertina. Thanks very much, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And you know, there's no question, this is, this is a fantastic program. But you know, my, my question to Rob is, I understand this, is, this program is levy funded, is that correct? Mr. Mr. You, Mr. Deputy Mayor, yes. All right, and so if we approve this today without it going to the 2013 budget, will the taxes be raised potentially for our taxpayers? Will, will this impact our levy? Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, yes it will be. The levy will have to increase $400,000. Thank you. And that is the reason why I'd like it to go to the 2013 budget. We just listened to a five minute, well can you give me a rough idea of what the amount's gonna be? If it's in the 2013 budget process, we will have all the figures in front of us. If this is going to impact our taxpayers' levy, and I'm hearing clearly from our finance, uh, current finance person that it is, then I think we need to have all the figures in front of us. I don't think there's a question that we're not going to move forward with this program, but the figures in it may change slightly. Who knows? They may even increase. We may have another great opportunity come to us. That's just my point. Okay, thank you, Councilor Partridge. Mayor Bertino. We do have a number. It's six times the, uh, we heard uh, Mr. Rossini say that the interest that we pay on the interest-free loan, the return on an annual basis is six times. And I can tell you, if you look out that window, and see what's over there, the developer said that would never have happened without our programs would not happen. That's all. Thank you, um, Mayor Bertina. Councilor Whitehead. I, mean, I, I, like, I love the way this is being spun. Our staff has clearly indicated to us there's no opportunity lost here. So basically, this is basically cherry-picking a particular great project. No one's 
and we're having a debate about a project, whether it's good or bad. No one said that it's a bad project. What we're saying is let's stick with the process that we all agreed on. And that process was that we will deal with budget requests within the 2013 framework. We're now plucking something out of that framework and saying we're going to do it now. And I just think it's a dangerous process. We either agreed with this process or we don't. If we want to change the process, then maybe we need to revisit the process and say, okay, we're going to start, start cherry-picking programs before we understand all the pressures. And I don't think that's a good way of doing business for the city. So you want to talk about doing business, what people expect us to do is make decisions not in a vacuum. They expect us to make a decision based on all pertinent information in front of us. And we don't have that yet. So this is, in fact, cherry-picking. And to spin it anywhere else is ridiculous. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. We have Councillor Pesuda. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Marula. And uh, I agree with everybody here. Yes, we should move. <laughs> We've got two sides, okay? I agree. This is a terrific project. The return on it is great. But process, we need to follow due process here. And I think this needs to go to the budget process. Yes, it looks promising. The numbers are great. But we've got to do process, as Councillor Whitehead has said and Councillor Partridge. And uh, it's not that far off the process. And I'd be supportive of this, totally. But we've got to do the process. And that's my, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Okay. All right, Councillor McCaddy, can, uh, can you read your motion again, seconded by Councillor Farr? And we'll have a standing record of a vote. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, move myself, second by Councillor Farr. That subsections A and B be amended by deleting the, er the words uh, referred to the 2013 budget process for council's consideration and replacing with the words and uh, sorry uh, be approved within the 2013 operating budget all right standing recorded vote all in favor and madam clerk it's McCaddy Farr Morelli Collins Jackson Marula Bertina those opposed? It, Duval, Whitehead, Partridge, Pasuda, Johnson, and Pearson. Madam Clerk? Carried 7 6. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Moving on to this. Oh. Motion to receive the presentation, moved by Collins, seconded by Morelli. All in favor? Carried. Many thanks. And Madam Clerk? Motion has, amend has amended, moved by Collins, seconded by Jackson. All in favor? Carried. And those opposed, uh, recorded is Pearson, Johnson, Pasuda, Partridge. Same, it would be the same. Whitehead, uh, Duvall, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> Moving, uh, yeah, that's right. Moving on to discussion items. Members of committee, are there any questions with respect to item 8.1? And that's related to the 2013 tax supported user fees. We have a mover moved by Councillor Johnson. Order, order. <laughs> Actually, I don't see the staff here that wrote it up. If this is the one with the user fees? Yes. <laughs> Councillor Johnson, do you have a question? <laughs> yes, but the staff's not here. I've okay, so we, we do have a motion, or is the staff, have they arrived? Yep, they've arrived. Okay, Councillor Johnson, your question is directed to whom? Uh, can I direct this to the author of the... The report, please, and sorry, I don't have that name right in front of me yet. What was that all about? Maria? Is Maria around? Okay, Councillor Johnson, you, your question? Just okay, Maybe you should ask the question, then we'll, we'll see who, who's willing to answer it. Okay. When I look at the user fees, and I, I automatically went to the, to the animal control. I just want to clarify some things, if you don't mind. The impound fees for one cat, no, sorry, hang on. The surrender fees for one cat is $157, but up to a litter of five is $57. 
So for five cats, you can do this for under 60, but for one cat, you're close to 160. So I don't understand that part. Okay, who would like to uh, answer that? No, they didn't. It's right Sorry, through the chair, um, with the litters, we actually don't get very many litters surrendered, and they're kittens up to 12 weeks. Okay, so you've got a litter up to five, so a full-grown cat is $160, and a litter up to five is 57 uh, and $52. I guess my reasoning behind this is if I had one cat, do I go and snag somebody else's so I can, I can get a bonus, so I can it, get half off? So through? through the chair, it would have to be a litter. So, and they're kittens, and the cost of handling the kittens is much less than it is a full-grown cat. Okay. Councilor Johnson? Um, yeah, and the other one is the small livestock has gone up as well. Um, as far as the large livestock, I understand that this is done cost effective, it's cost recovery. But for small livestock, do we even have the space for this live and, and small stock, large and small? Sorry, through the chair, um, are you talking about impound fees yes. or yes. surrender? Yeah. Um, through the chair, um, the small livestock would be what we've received are probably ducks, chickens. Um, I think we had a goat at one time, and we do have the space in dog holding for animals like that, but it's rare to get any livestock into the shelter. Okay, um, and the large livestock is cost recovery, so do we have the facilities for that, or do we have to ask a farmer to house them for us until we find the owner? Uh, through the chair, um, if we did get large livestock, we have staff who have farms who have uh, volunteered their space. We do have that? We have them on record? The uh, yes. Sorry, through the chair, yes, we do. And that's throughout the entire rural area, not just in, in cherry picking? So we have them in Upper Stony Creek, we have them in Glanbrook, we have them in Ancaster and in Flamborough? Through the chair, yes, staff have volunteered their space, and in Flamborough... Uh, we have a contracted service, and in Glanbrook at this point, we have a contracted service. Okay, um, the contracted service at Glanbrook, are we talking about the one we presently have with Michelle Bain, or are we talking about a new one? Sue. Through the chair, yes, it'd be the current one with uh, Michelle Bain. Okay, now my understanding is that you're, you're hoping to um, eliminate that contract, so do we have anybody in Glanbrook that can house large yeah. livestock? Just to remind everyone, go through the chair when asking questions, it's far more professional. So, can you repeat the question? Repeat the question? I, I didn't. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry? Repeat the question through the chair. Okay, it was a while ago. Um, okay, so if the, if, through you, Chair, to Sue, if the contract was eliminated in Glanbrook, do we have a backup plan for li large li livestock there? Uh, through the chair, yes, we do. Again, it would be through staff who have their own farms who've okay. offered their facilities. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and I think that's it for me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Now, we now have uh, Councillor Pearson on 8.1. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And just a question, whoever can answer it, with regards to the, um, I just want clarification at the recreation facilities. We have an example of cooking classes. And they're different rates. Is there a reasoning why they're different rates at the different facilities for hourly rates? Who would like to uh, take a Bring shot? Joanne? Uh, through you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, we have uh, similar issues throughout a lot of our programs, uh, Councillor, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's on the service delivery review um, as an opportunity to look at uh, all of our fees from uh, many perspectives, what's in there, and, the one of, and that's one of the issues we'd have to cover off. Councilor Pearson. So we'll leave this as is now as far as the fee structure, but that will be a review that we can deal with later and then in the 2014 budget. Thank you. I see nodding. Thanks, Councilor Pearson. Oh, Councilor Duvall and then Whitehead. Councilor Duvall. Thanks, Mr. Chair. And, and uh, I thank Councillor Pearson for pointing just one out, but there's several, especially in the Recreation Department, where the rates vary all over the place. So I understand um, it's going back to staff to be uh, on the service delivery review, but however, um, I will not be supporting any type of an increase until that is finalized. So, uh, noted, so recorded as opposed uh, by Councillor Duvall. Uh, Councillor Whitehead, then Councillor Johnson for a second time. Councillor Whitehead. Can I ask to uh, staff, uh, we take yeah. this uh, um, 
the appendix in its entirety. How much revenue is being generated through user fees in, total, in its totality? Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. The incremental increase uh, in user fees would be $1.8 million. And so if we implement all these increases, that's our estimate. And that's revenue to the city? Uh, yes, it is, and that would directly reduce the property tax pressures and tax levy for next year. Okay. Um, I mean, if I was being a cynic, I would uh, say let's move this now because that's revenue coming into the city. But, uh, you know, I don't want to cherry pick. I believe in a process, so I will uh, wait till we conclude the 2013 budget with all pieces on the table. Well, I'm going to give myself a chair. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to give the chair to, to uh, Mayor Bertina. Now, uh, through you, uh, Mayor Bertina, just, just on that one point, because we're comparing apples to melons again. <laughs> and I love when, when apples are being compared to melons. Um, how much of actual, uh, the expenditure here, so for every dollar that's being spent, Oh, wait a minute, we're not actually investing any money on this one. We're actually taxing, aren't we? So through you, Mr. Mayor, is, isn't that true that user fees are known to be a euphemism for taxation? Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, no, I would not characterize it that way, though I don't like to disagree, oh, okay. but well, just... a user fee is where we can distinguish a personal benefit for the personal consumption of a service, it's appropriate to use a user fee, where there's a public benefit wider than we use right. taxes. But to you, Mr. Mayor, to, to, to basically compare an investment in the loans program to a user fee, would you compare them to be on the same level? Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, the reason why, if, if the essence of, of, of the matter is the reason why we need these approved today is because there's a timing issue. User fees start with the calendar year. We need some lead time for uh, publication of materials, marketing, and what have you. Hence, that's our part of our normal process is to bring the user fee report a couple months mm -hmm. earlier, get it approved, because it takes several weeks to get it implemented for right. January 1, 2015. And lastly, Mr. Mayor, we approved the downtown loans program and we're approving this today, so they're basically both being approved today through you, Mr. Mayor? Uh, they are today now. <laughs> Indeed. So I'm not quite sure what, what Councillor Whitehead's point was. So thanks very much for your, for your time. And we have uh, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Through you to uh, Joanne Priel um, or Jack Brown, please. A lot of these are recreation. My understanding in discussion with staff is that these are basically a rate of inflation increase on the current uh, structure of the fees. So first of all, through you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to Joanne. Can I just get that confirmed, please, especially on the rec side? Joanne? Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Chair, that's correct. And secondly, a subsequent question to Joanne, um, Mr. Deputy Mayor, my understanding in discussions with staff is again on the rec side, most if not all of the stakeholders, maybe not all, but a lion's share of the users, the stakeholders, the traditional uh, sport associations have been notified of this basic rate of inflation increase at this time. Mr. Deputy Mayor, through to Joanne, please. Um, through you, Mr. Deputy Chair, I'm, I'm seeing three heads nodding behind me, so I, I would say yes. Okay, so for, for me that's important, Mr. Deputy Mayor. In the past, a few years ago, we ran into difficulty, especially on the rec side, where we sometimes blindsided, maybe unintentionally, some of the uh, minor sports associations out there, the volunteer-driven, do great work in our community, and sometimes we unintentionally maybe blindsided them with an increased re report recommended to council. We had to refer it back. This one, and with the new director of recreation we have, who's well-known in the community with him and his staff, uh, consultation, to my understanding, has been done in the lion's share of cases. This, again, is a rate of inflation increase. I'm happy to support this. Most would be on side. And the larger issue that Councillor Pearson Duvel talked about, I know Jack Brown and staff, that's a much bigger, larger citywide debate, is uh, unfolding, but it's going to take a lot of time to finally get to maybe where we want to get to. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Whitehead, for a second time. Thank you. And I just want to. Uh, uh, clarify that, that in fact the staff are recommending we prove this uh, now as opposed to the last report and so I certainly support the recommendation thank you that was my point <laughs> Councillor Johnson yeah and, and I'm sorry Sue just one last question about the large livestock if you don't mind if you're saying that staff are offering their farms and when I look at page 5 of 95 it says cost recovery sorry Sue Sorry. 
Sorry, so it's 7 of 95. And it says large says large and, and, and small livestock cost recovery. You said earlier that the staff would be offering the use of their farms. Through the chair. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't Just realize if you can tell somebody's name out loud. It's all right. So through the chair. It's got, it's got cost recovery, and you're saying that the staff are offering their farms. So what I'd like to know is, can we not put a dollar figure in there anyways? Because in my opinion, it just looks a little bit muddy. That, you know, cost recovery, does this mean that staff gets a $1,000 check at the end of the day? Or is it after five days? Is it after 10 days? Because there's a bit of a, uh, or is it they're offering it for free? It would just be nice to have some sort of a number there to go back to the, to the community as, again. This just looks too vague. Uh, through the chair, the reason uh, cost recovery was put in there was because mm -hmm. it depends on the type of animal that you would be housing. If it's a chicken, ducks, goat, pig, horse, cow, there's a different cost related to each one, so that's why it was established it would be cost recovery okay. based on the room and board for that animal. And thank you for that. Through you, Chair. If that's going to happen, can you at least put C the table A or something so that you can have something to refer to? Because as I said, if staff are offering these services and we're going to pay staff to house these large and small livestock, it looks muddy if you just put cost recovery. So it's almost like we could just make up numbers. So if we have something that says C table A, schedule B, whatever it is, at least tighten it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more... Um, I'm just going to say professional, but I think that word's been used too much. So, does that make sense? So does that make sense? Uh, through the chair, yes, we could do that because what we would do is um, actually go to the market and find out what uh, independent operators would charge, and we would use that the same that we look at uh, kennel operations for uh, housing of dogs and cats. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Johnson. No further speakers on uh, 8.1 and what we have here. <laughs> If we, 8.1, it's moved by Jackson, seconded by Farr, all in favor, carried with a recorded vote in opposition in Councillor Duvall. Moving on, uh, folks, we're at 8.2, we have uh, Councillor Whitehead, uh, McCaddy. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Mayor, it's been, a, it's been a while since we've had that uh, confusion, uh, but uh, thanks for that. Uh, this is the uh, Committee Against Racism's uh, Anti-Racism Final Report Recommendations. And this, uh, this is following up on uh, the uh, annual, uh, or the, I guess the biannual conferences that the uh, Committee Against Racism holds. There's a number of recommendations that, uh, the symposium rather, uh, that they, uh, they hold every couple of years. And, and there's a number of recommendations that have been, been worked on and, and continue to be worked on over the uh, period of time. So this is a report uh, on the status of those, so I just wanted to begin by thanking the Committee Against Racism. Mr. Deputy Mayor, I, uh, I uh, represent council on that committee. Uh, in fact, I think we meet tonight, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, I'll have to check on that. Uh, but there's some good recommendations here, and, uh, and I think one of the more interesting ones are, is, a, uh, is this uh, idea of a resource center that uh, be a place for, for folks to, to call and to receive help if they actually have experienced uh, racist uh, uh, comments or, or behavior directed towards them. Currently, there's not a location for them to do that. Uh, certainly, if, if, it's a, if it's a hate crime, the Hamilton police uh, deal with those kinds of issues, but there's many uh, a little more subtle uh, racist uh, activities that occur here in Hamilton and other cities, of course, uh, that uh, people need some support uh, when that occurs, and we want to make sure it doesn't occur. So that uh, is something that we're going to uh, continue to work on at the committee. The feasibility study is being uh, prepared, and we're in uh, consultations now with, with a variety of partners uh, uh, throughout uh, Hamilton. I uh, hesitate to do so, but I just want to express my uh, a little bit of concern, I think, uh, with Hamilton Police Services and their response. You, you'll remember, I think most uh, members of council will remember the, the uh, discussion that occurred when the committee asked for a, a copy of the Hamilton Police Services equity policy, and uh, they were refused that policy, and then Chief DeCare uh, or the Hamilton Police Services Committee said, well, go ahead and, and uh, apply for that through a freedom of information request, and it really looks like that uh, policy doesn't meet the requirements of uh, being protected by freedom of information. 
uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, city staff are going to request it under freedom of information, even though it, it appears that that's not, uh, it does not protect it under that piece of legislation. So I wanted to, unfortunately, just raise that because I'm a little surprised at, at that, uh, particularly given our previous discussion around this uh, table and the, uh, the willingness, uh, you know, to try and uh, support the committee against racism on that. The uh, the training that uh, that the committee uh, the uh, uh, Maxine's office uh, Jane's office offers the anti racism training continues to have mixed results in terms of the number of folks here in the within the city of Hamilton who actually attend and take that training. I'd like to encourage take this opportunity to encourage uh, people to, to take that training. I think there's only one counselor that's taken the, that training out of 16 counselors so far, and uh, I think it's important. Uh, to, uh, to take that. Uh, that information is contained in, uh, in the appendix, appendix A of, of the report, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that outlines uh, all the different departments and different uh, parts of the city and how they've, uh, how they've taken that anti-racism training. So thanks again to, uh, to, to Maxine and, and Jane for the preparation of this report. And I'll continue to work with the Committee Against Racism on, uh, on the recommendations that are still outstanding the, the website work, uh, the, uh, the uh, resource center work that uh, is ongoing. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor McCaddy. We now have uh, Councillor Jackson. Thanks, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and I um, appreciate all the work that the committee's done, primarily volunteer driven, and with our council representative, Councillor McCaddy, on it, uh, with his leadership. If you recall back in February, Mr. Deputy Mayor, when the um, volunteer group made their presentation, uh, they had a list of uh, recommendation items. Uh, I thought some of them, uh, even though they um, suggested should um, be um, obligatory, I suggested some of them, you know, should be at the uh, discretion, uh, especially for uh, members of council. And I said back then, and always will, that um, my door has always been an open door policy in terms of the multicultural aspect of our community, the ethnocultural aspect of our community and um, to suggest otherwise I think just uh, would imply something different and so I suggest on behalf of any of my colleagues who wanted to uh, take them up on their offer uh, for any symposiums workshops um, would never discourage that but um, in terms of obligatory I just felt that um, to each uh, their own in terms of making sure that they understand the multicultural dynamics of our community and I've always been one who's tried to keep my ear to the ground in that regard. If you also recall, Mr. Deputy Mayor, back then, I was concerned about the Resource Center. And if I could ask through you to, is Jane Lee here? If I could ask through you to Jane, um, that Jane, um, welcome. on the C part, uh, the wording of the C part almost leads me to think that there's going to be gaps, there's going to be obstacles towards uh, potential partnerships on the feasibility study for the Resource Center which almost would lead one to, all right, is this kind of preparing this corporation for X number of dollars of capital and operating costs down the road? So could Jean clarify for me, Mr. Deputy Mayor, the intent on C, please? Thank Jean? you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Committee Against Racism and together with our staff uh, have been uh, working on consulting with various <laughs> community groups and members of the community with respect to this matter that was referred to uh, staff. Um, I, I don't, I think the gaps, and um, certainly there are gaps in the community that have been uh, brought forward over the years. So I, I think there are certainly some gaps that the committee raised with you. We've heard them from community members as well. I don't think that recommendation C predetermines anything at this point in time. Uh, we have been able to up until this point in time address in some manner all of the other recommendations. So we just uh, also did not want to report uh, in advance of the committee being able to report to you what their findings were, including the discussions they're having with other community groups about possible partnerships. And until that, uh, that their investigation is complete, um, we didn't really want to report on that in any way and that is the one recommendation that is outstanding is not being addressed today so we felt that it was important that they could be given an opportunity to provide their findings to you before we would then address that okay Jane I appreciate that it gives me some uh, comfort level in terms of a more prudent course of action on C and I'm not saying that necessarily hypothetically I'm against the establishment of a 
Resource Center, but um, I just want to make sure we're all one taxpayer in the City of Hamilton, and I uh, just reminded the volunteer group of that 10 months ago, and I think they understood that as well. Have uh, outstanding organizations that we funded in our city, like the HCCI, Hamilton Center for Civic Inclusion, have they been brought into this picture? Uh, first, I'll ask my question, then I'll tell the reason for why. Mr. Deputy Mayor, through to Jane, please. Jane. Yes, the uh, committee has met with them um, about this project. They, they did invite HCCI to their meeting, one of their meetings, and they have discussed it with them. Okay. On um, that point, Councillor Jackson, I think oh, Councillor yes, McCaddy sorry. would like to help out. Yep, Councillor McCaddy? Sure. Yep. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through to Councillor Jackson. Uh, HCCI uh, is involved in this discussion about the Resource Centre. Uh, they uh, think there's probably a, a strong role for them to play, and, and they have noted that Indeed, they are an existing organization. They, they are funded. Uh, and uh, I also, I, I sit on uh, HCCI on behalf of council as well, so I'm trying to connect the two. And uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, three to Councillor Jackson, I have actually set up a, a, a special meeting between HCCI Terrific. and our staff uh, uh, to, to discuss this very issue directly. It seems like there's a bit of, bit of missing going on, uh, which happens from time to time. Um, so we're going to have a direct meeting so we understand each other and uh, look for uh, joint opportunities. Uh, Councillor McCaddy, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that even raises my comfort level even more. I thank you for that because my subsequent question was that word on the street was that maybe there's been a disconnect and, and we often worry about any duplications or redundancies in terms of serving our public in whatever way we can. But if there's something out there that we've established that's working great, we don't necessarily want to duplicate. I don't know if the resource center hypothetically would or not, but that's always a concern of mine as well. So from what Councillor McKay has said, what Jane Lee, the director of the department, has said, and the prudent course of action, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I see and see, with the report still coming back after their findings, I'm satisfied moving ahead with 8.2 at this time. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Jackson. Uh, we now have Councillor Whitehead and McCad McCaddy for a second time. No, no, but did you want to come back on the list? <laughs> okay. Council waited. Glad you clarified that I'm not Councilman Caddy. Um, I really appreciate, uh, uh, although, in fact, the reason I'm speaking to Councilor uh, Jackson raised the questions I want to ask, but I want to highlight, uh, um, I can't think of a better councillor in the context of uh, uh, pulling the, some of these pieces together than Councilor McCaddy, and I just want to certainly on my behalf and the residents that I represent to thank Councilor McCaddy and his leadership on here, these here. two committees. Wow, what brought that on? That was nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. A point to a motion at eight point two. Moved by McCaddy, seconded by Farr. All in favor? Carry. Carry. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. As amended. Who has the amendment, uh, Madam Clerk? Should we just move it as amended then? Oh, okay. The amendment is that it's going to be it's going to report to um, AFNA, and everyone's uh, in agreement with that. So that's as amended that it will be report that it will report to finance. All in favor? Oh, so Council McCaddy. Uh, if if I can ask at all, I I prefer if they report to GIC uh, on these the same as we have okay. today, Madam Clerk. Then uh, we can. Uh, I, it's it's uh, partly for selfish reasons. I, I don't sit on AFNA, and I think this is a glo global issue. The uh, okay, allow Madam Clerk to answer. Madam Clerk, uh, it is at the discretion of, of the General Issues Committee. However, the Committee Against Racism does report under the umbrella of the Audit Finance and Administration Committee. Okay, as all so as procedurally, all we have to do it that way. Pardon? So procedurally, we have to do it that way. It should report back to AFNA. At which time can be referred to GIC from there? Yes. Okay, so why don't we take that uh, procedural route then? Could we communicate that accordingly, Madam Clerk? Uh, when, when the issue is going to go to the Audit Finance Administration Committee, we can forward a mem memo to all members of council advising okay. that the issue will be on that particular agenda. Okay, fair enough. Okay, we'll allow the chair to respond. Um, are, we, are we okay with referring it back to GIC, Madam? Uh, 
chair or I don't have a problem with it okay. I've just been throughout the whole year that I've been the chairperson I have been repeatedly told that we have so much coming to GIC that they're trying to diff to to put the community committees back in where they where they're supposed to report to so uh, I'm up to to this council on what their wishes are I know we had one issue that came through from the racism and it was to join an organization that we all had no problem with and we felt that it didn't have to come here. We dealt with it at AFNA. So that's where the history is coming from, where Councillor okay. McCaddy is concerned. But I guess my point is, Madam Clerk, procedurally, can we today refer to GIC or must we refer to uh, the committee? As I indicated, it can be brought back to GIC if it is the committee's wish. However, the Committee Against Racism does report back. So procedurally, we have to refer it to finance first, at which time can be referred back to GIC? Yes, it can, if you want the presentation to come okay. back to GIC. Okay, so then that's what will move accordingly. And that was moved accordingly. Thanks very much, Madam Clerk. So on 8.2, all in favor? Yes. Carried. On 8.3, uh, Councillor McCaddy. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, move this uh, if that's appropriate at this point in time. So be it. Uh, moved by McCaddy, seconded by Farr. And I just speak to it briefly, very briefly. Um, this is uh, the effort that uh, the Royal Botanical Gardens have had underway for about uh, four years now, I think, um, to, uh, to establish a Coots to Escarpment Park system. And they've been working away at this uh, with, uh, with, some, with Trillium funding and support from RBG. And the intent here is, is to uh, establish a formal uh, memorandum of understanding with the city and others, all the other partners in this, and to uh, support that initiative with a, uh, a small contribution of $15,000 uh, annually just for three years. And I know uh, Chris Murray's been working on this uh, at his level, and uh, uh, this report's been prepared under his uh, guidance. Uh, so I think, I think we're on uh, solid ground with the approach, and we'll join the other uh, municipalities, Halton and Burlington, uh, who are also working on this uh, project. Thank you, Councillor McCaddy. So it's moved by Councillor McCaddy, seconded by Councillor Farr on 8.3. All in favor? Carried. Carried. On 8.4, relationship between the Chamber of Commerce and Hamilton Association, Councillor Whitehead. Oh, before I request a uh, mover, sorry, and second to receive this report, I would advise that the clerks uh, will prepare the necessary motion for the November 28th uh, council to have the previous terms of reference approved in November of 2011, rescinded, and approve the revised terms of reference that are attached to this report. So I need a mover and a seconder to receive the report, and that's yeah. moved by Whitehead, seconded by Colin. All in favor? Well, before you do that, oh, Chair, I, sure. I, I think I at least need to, uh, uh, I don't want to have to get the detail, we'll get the detail when that motion goes forward. Fair enough. So I want to thank uh, uh, especially uh, Mary uh, Gallagher and certainly all the BIA uh, representatives that uh, have been sitting around the Abia table uh, taking a look at the terms of reference and the issues and the challenges and determining a, a better model that better fits uh, uh, the focus and the vision of this council. So uh, at this time, I just want to thank all those involved to get us to where we are, and I look forward to the discussion when the, uh, the actual motion comes forward. All right, thank you, Councillor White. So to receive. All in favor? Carried. Carried on 8.4. Moving on to motions. Uh, the Enridge Pipelines Incorporated. Councillor McCaddy? Thanks, uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor. And this is moved by myself, second by Councillor Farr. Uh, and this motion uh, has been before us for a little while. And of course, uh, last week uh, at our GIC, we did have uh, Enbridge uh, visit, and I thought uh, their presentation was very informative and very helpful. Uh, so I've uh, modified the motion, uh, and you've got the, uh, the yellow version of this. It says 9.1 revised, and I may need uh, some help from uh, Carolyn as to how this has been put together in terms of formatting, but uh, I think what, uh, what, what I've Carolyn has done, and, and the motion that I'd sent to Carolyn uh, included the uh, the original wording uh, in, in uh, several locations, and then included the uh, the new wording. So, if, if we're uh, looking at the whereas is uh, one, two, three, four, whereas is down. That's the original uh, wording, which was my initial understanding uh, that Enbridge had submitted an application to the NEB to uh, flow uh, uh, bitumen through the through the pipe. 
uh, on that date that I have there. And uh, when we met with them, uh, they uh, clarified that point. And what, in fact, they've done is, is the next whereas. Uh, Ember submitted a pre-application letter to the NEB on October 11th, uh, giving notice of the upcoming Line 9 B reversal and Line 9 capacity expansion project application. And that wording is the wording that I took from, uh, from their application. So that's uh, the second, the last whereas in the list here is the correct one. Uh, and under therefore be it resolved, uh, just looking uh, quickly at this. Uh, yeah, so again, item, uh, item one there was the old, old uh, item, description of the public process, et cetera, et cetera. So the council can determine where to intervene in the upcoming hearing. And the uh, revised and correct one is actually listed as item two here. So it would be the new item one. Description of the public process around intervening in the Enbridge Line 9 reversal and Line 9 capacity expansion project application. That's following the language that I had above there, uh, which is expected in late November 2012, and that was based on what Enbridge had said when they were before us uh, last time, uh, last week. So that becomes uh, the new uh, new item, item I, I guess it is. And the rest, I believe, is the same, and I'll uh, look for some guidance from... Uh, from uh, Carolyn, a uh, uh, little hard to follow this. Um, so if I can just ask for you to, to Carolyn, is there anything else that changed between the original motion and the, uh, Clerk? the revision that I had sent to her late last week? No, I, it was just those two paragraphs. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilor I guess Kennedy. the only other logistical change, Councillor Farr just reminded me, item D and E on the, on the last uh, part of the motion says the appropriate staff forward correspondence to Environment Canada, and the one below says to the Ministry of the Environment. It should, should probably uh, read, because we're corresponding as council, that the, the mayor forward correspondence to Environment Canada, uh, and uh, item E would say that the uh, mayor forward correspondence to the interim minister of the environment rather than staff. So those, those are the uh, uh, changes uh, to my original motion after hearing uh, Enbridge last week. And uh, just a final comment from me, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, uh, Enbridge, uh, one of the really helpful things they did last week, uh, their lawyer was here, their communication person, process person, and they clarified the, uh, the Net, uh, National Energy Board process and how uh, council could intervene in that process should they decide to do so. And that was part of that uh, slide deck that they provided that, uh, that morning, uh, which is very helpful. So we, we have that information now, and we have much more information than we did before. So what I'm looking for in the um, motion here is that city staff report back on that, simply uh, compiling that information uh, from Hamilton's perspective, the, uh, the generic uh, process information that uh, Enbridge provided to us to provide that in a report back. Uh, so there's nothing, there's no research for staff to do. It's simply taking the Enbridge information and putting it into a Hamilton context uh, reporting back to us. Uh, so that, I think, is it. Thank you, Councillor McCandy. We do have a few speakers, and Councillor Partridge and Pasuda. Any other speakers? Hearing none, Councillor Partridge. Yes, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And um, I just want to thank Councillor McCaddy. He's uh, certainly been the champion for environmental issues around this table. Um, and, uh, you know, I certainly appreciate that. As far as the motion in front of us, I do have a couple of questions for staff. Um, the first one is uh, to legal. And I'm just wondering if you have any issues with this motion at all. Yes, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to the Councillor. As I understand the motion, I'm not sure there's any issue with it. It is a request, essentially, for information from various sources uh, and a, a review of process information that's contained in a statute somewhere. So uh, if it's limited to that, uh, not something that is inappropriate to do if that's the will of Council. All right, and thank you. And, and I certainly wasn't asking from the perspective of it not being an appropriate thing to do. Um, my next question is, uh, I'll, if I may, uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to the councillor who's moving the motion. I just want to be clear. 
When you refer to, um, therefore be it resolved, under A, and you're listing 1, 2, and 3, I thought I heard that 2 was supposed to replace 1, which to my mind would mean that 1 wouldn't be there. It would be what's under 2. So the way I'm reading it right now, nothing has really been replaced. There's just been some things added in. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, if you could just comment on that. Councillor McKenney. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor Partridge is exactly right. Uh, so I should have clarified that. I was trying to figure it out as I was speaking, uh, to be honest with you. But uh, the item I that you see in front of you in the yellow uh, document is the old, the old um, uh, item. And the new item to replace that is, uh, shows up as item two in this one, which should in fact, so item, item I as we see it here, uh, should be eliminated, deleted. And uh, what I, uh, the item two that we see here should then become item, item one. And then I guess the uh, re uh, renumbering would follow down below. All right, and thank you. And just uh, on that point, if I may, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I thought there was another item that was put in there that was to replace a previous one. I find it very confusing because if we end up passing this, we're going to be passing what's in front of us that, that has all the... Um, so I think, uh, Councilor McCaddy? Yeah, so the only other uh, item of that type, um, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through to Councilor Partridge, is, is in the, uh, the whereas's. So uh, the last two whereas's, uh, the first one, uh, refer, I'll just refer to the date because that's sort of the easy difference, the October 23rd. That is deleted because that's, that's the old information I had, and you and I talked about that. Mm -hmm. And the new information that we received uh, from uh, Enbridge uh, refers to October 11th uh, with the wording that you see here. So, so to be clear, we're deleting the uh, second last whereas, one that says October 23rd, and then we're deleting the first uh, uh, under be it resolved, so item, item I, and then uh, one that certainly, currently says item 2 becomes item, item I, and then Everything else stays the same with the only other change being that the mayor forward correspondence to Environment Canada, MOE, rather than staff. All right, and thank you for clarifying that. Um, I just have another, I'm hoping, uh, friendly amendment that I'd like to um, run by you through you, Deputy Mayor, and this is under item B. Under item B, you've got uh, that the City of Hamilton emergency response staff report back on whether or how a diluted bitumen spill would be handled. And I'm wondering, rather than just keeping it to the diluted bitumen, it would be any oil spill, whether it be light, medium, or heavy crude. Um, and I'm just wondering if you would take that as a friendly amendment. Councilman McKetty. Uh, through Mr. Duffy, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to um, maybe, if, if I can suggest back to Councillor Partridge, if we could, if we could say light, medium, heavy, crude, and diluted bitumen. The reason I had uh, diluted bitumen in there is that it behaves quite differently than crude oil. Uh, when a spill occurs, it's it's very viscous and heavy, and as we know from the uh, from the situation down in uh, Kalamazoo River, it, it tends to sink. Uh, whereas the other types of oil sit on top of the water. So if, if, uh, if it's okay uh, with Councillor Partridge, can we add light, medium, heavy, crude, and, and uh, diluted bitumen spill would be handled? It's my sense is they would be handled a bit differently. Yes, and, and I would be fine with that. It's just that we have not seen any kind of a report of how a spill would be handled. So I thought it would be important to, uh, to cover that off. And just my final comments is I certainly have no problem with uh, staff bringing back a report which has been asked for in here. Um, and you did, uh, mm -hmm. Councillor McCaddy, did refer to the fact that when Enbridge was in here, their slide deck, all the presentations that they made, have already answered a lot of what we are asking for in the therefore be it resolved. And um, Councillor McCaddy, through you, Chair, Councillor McCaddy and I had a chance to speak last week about some of my concerns around the motion. Um, Enbridge, from my perspective, I have not had any complaints from Flamborough. They are a very good corporate citizen. And, um, uh, you know, I, as long as 
the information coming back is information that would be easy for staff to assimilate, bring back to us for more information. The bottom line is though, folks, we have absolutely no jurisdiction. Municipalities have no jurisdiction. Um, it's all through the National Energy Board. So my last question to legal counsel through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, would be, knowing that we do not have any jurisdiction <clears throat> over this application process, is there anything in this motion that is not there that should be there, or is there... Yeah, Mr. Fisher? Again, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, jurisdiction, I think, here relates to regulatory jurisdiction. Right. We have no jurisdiction to regulate these matters. Um, it does. It is a matter of interest to this council because a portion of this activity occurs within the boundaries of the city of Hamilton. So as long as, again, right now what we're doing is gathering information, you may or may not have a decision subsequently as to what to do with that information, but that's a different issue. Um, I think we're okay. I, I certainly don't want to be adding any more to this uh, resolution than what's there, but I don't see anything uh, that's unmanageable at this point. All right, and thank you for that. And uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I just, you know, again, I think it's important for those who are watching this meeting right now and uh, those who are in attendance to understand that we do not have any jurisdiction over this process. And so whatever comes back to us is for information only and I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, those are my comments. Thank you, Councillor Partridge. Councillor Pasuto. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Marula, and I'll be quick. Uh, Councillor Partridge has pretty well covered off everything. And thank you, through you, thank you to uh, Councillor McCaddy for some of the changes in his motion. And, uh, and it's true, a lot of the stuff that uh, Enbridge presented in this slide when they were back on the 21st here, staff can gather out of this uh, information pamphlet we have here. It's all in here, National Energy Board, Energy Board contacts, everything is here. Um, should there be a spill, it's in here. It's all in here so they can just take it out of here, draft it and present it to us. So, uh, and I too have had uh, only, I've had some complaints now but uh, about Enbridge and concerns, but not necessarily within my ward, outside of my ward, more into Hamilton and that. And, and we all care about our environment and any spills that should happen. So don't let anybody take away that uh, either Council Parch or myself or anybody here on Council table or staff members are not concerned about our environment and protecting it. But uh, right. we, all use, we all use oil too, so uh, we have to look at that, but we'll respect that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Pursuit. Council McKetty. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just to, or Mr. Deputy Mayor, just, just to clarify a point. Um, Although we don't have any regulatory jurisdiction, as uh, Mr. Fisher has indicated, we do have a decision uh, uh, on whether we want to play a role at the National Energy Board hearing that will occur at some point. We, we have the ability to uh, intervene and, uh, if we uh, decide to do so. At this point, I'm, I'm certainly not advocating that. I'm advocating uh, continuing to gather additional information that's in, contained in this motion that refers back to our first time. This was before us. There was a number of delegates who were here that day. Uh, who uh, who spoke so so although that's not uh, jurisdiction in that sense it is a it is a decision that uh, we have the ability to uh, to make uh, and, uh, as this council and important to have information in front of us to uh, assist us in making that uh, uh, d decision and uh, I was quite impressed by uh, Enbridge uh, boy they had uh, six people here uh, many from Calgary who uh, came in to uh, assist us and that's very respectful of them to do that um, so this is not a popularity contest or anything, it's just getting the information and the ability to make that decision at the appropriate time. Thank you, Councillor McCaddy. So on the motion we have Council, oh I'm sorry, Councillor Pesuda. Real quick, uh, three Mr. Uh, Chairman to staff, legal staff. Do we have legal staff, should we want to go to the, to the board hearing? Do we have legal staff that would be prepared to go or do we have to hire outside, I was going to say an environmental lawyer or something Mr. Like Fisher? That? For you? Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I, I would think it's safe to say that there's probably no expertise in the city, whether it's legal or engineering or planning or anything that is specific to this kind of issue. Obviously, this isn't a typical municipal issue. And these are very complicated, very technical hearings. So, again, when the time comes, if the time comes, uh, that would be a decision. But I think it's safe to say there's no expertise in the city at staff level at all for this. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. 
Um, and just on that point, then, how long would the process be? And any idea what a cost could be? Should we have to go to the National Energy Board? Sir? Again, uh, through you, Mr. Deputy, I don't, because I don't know that much about it. Um, okay. It would certainly, I, I'm just guessing, but it would be at least on the order of a, what a major Ontario Municipal Board hearing would cost, and I think we all know what that is, so it's, it won't be cheap. Okay, thank Sir? you, Don. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Pursuta. So, hearing no request for further speakers, Councilor Mc... I just asked, uh, again, I uh, had a little bit of a discussion at FCM on, on these issues, and, and it's been uh, pretty clear that the, uh, what's it called, the National, whatever it is, board, um, there's been some criticism. In fact, there's been uh, a number, uh, at least one or two inspectors that have come out and indicated that uh, uh, they're not doing appropriate inspections, and uh, I think that's a concern and an issue uh, moving forward, that we understand the resources and how the inspections are concluded by the national, uh, what's it called, national whatever board, energy, energy board, to ensure that uh, uh, that there's accountability on those inspections uh, on a go forward basis. So that's information I think that we need to uh, have some comfort moving forward. So. Thank you, uh, Councillor Whitehead. Uh, so on that note, uh, Councillor McCaddy, moved by Councillor McCaddy, seconded by Councillor Farr. All in favor, carried. Uh, Councillor Collins, you have a notice of motion. Uh, can you read it, please? Yeah. A notice of motion uh, regarding in front of everyone, isn't it? Would you, the public, the public watch. Speaking of engagement, <laughs> it's the declaration of surplus property for 50 Main Street East. Would you like me to read it in its entirety? Not its entirety. So it's regarding uh, property. It's in regards to the real estate staff initiating proceedings to declare 50 Main Street East, which is the old courthouse, as surplus. It is a four-part motion, and I will present it as a motion Thank at you. the next uh, GIC meeting. Thank you very much, Councillor Collins. Uh, outstanding business list items. Members of committee, item 11, part one, our revised due dates. May I have a motion for all of it inclusively? Moved by Collins, seconded by Duval. All in favor? Carried. Uh, members of committee, items 11.1 to transfer an item from uh, GIC outstanding business list. I need a motion on that as well. Moved by Pseudo, seconded by Partridge. All in favor? Carried. Now, we're, we have about a half an hour, I guess, uh, Madam Clerk. Or is it 4 p.m. or 4.15? We still have the in-camera as well. Right. So that's my question is, with respect to the in-camera, do we have enough time to complete what is expected of us in camera? If not, is this time sensitive? Um, I would defer that question to Mr. Fisher. Right. So Mr. Fisher, out of the list of in-camera items, uh, would you be comfortable going in camera and, and believing we could finish within 20 minutes? I would hope certainly on the uh, DC settlement one you could finish in about one minute. That would Great. be my preference. Um, I don't know about the other one, but I assume so. All right. Madam Clerk. There's also the update that the city manager was going to provide on the airport from the last meeting. Okay, so why don't I read this? We'll go on camera and see what we can do, and we'll go from there. Members of committee, we've just done general information. If we'll do that after. General information comes after. Okay, members of committee, item 12.1 of the closed session minutes uh, from November 7th, uh, Generation Committee, is there any questions respecting to these uh, minutes? May I have a mover? Moved by White House, second by Deval. All in favor? Great. Carried. Members of committee, may I have a motion to move into closed session pursuant to subsections E and F of the city's procedural bylaw? And second.